The year was 2020, a year that marked the lowest point for Arsenal since their invincible days. The end. The end. Where on earth are we now? Becoming a mid-table side seemed inevitable, and the fans were desperate for a spark. Arteta was losing his belief. Top four was looking like a distant dream, and the whispers of his sacking grew louder by the day. I'll take her out, man. It's done. I'm done. And then came season three. The predictions were grim. Most people saw Arsenal once again missing out on the top four. Top six usual pack is going to be Arsenal for me. But something extraordinary happened. Arteta, under immense pressure, reshaped his system from his mistakes and gave it his last try. And then, the transformation was nothing short of miraculous. Truly you wonder! Arsenal put away again at the top! In just one season, his new way of play transformed Arsenal from a fading mid-table side to a legitimate title contenders. The Champions League football, which was looking like a dream, will finally be played at Emirates after six long years. And with new signings, Arteta finally has all the resources to transform Arsenal into an elite side. So the question is, what changes he made in his system, and how he integrates these new signings into it? Let's discuss in this video. Mikel Arteta has consistently utilized a 4-2-3-1 formation throughout the last season. But during attacking phases, the team seamlessly transitions into alternative shapes such as 2-3-5 or 3-2-4-1 against different oppositions. One of the key factors for Arteta's success last season was his box midfield. In this structure, the left CDM gets forward to partner with the number 10, while their left back Zinchenko inverts centrally near the right CDM, forming a double pivot. This creates a unique box pattern in the midfield. It's quite similar to diamond midfield, but it provides a bit more width and a security blanket either side, as you have players who are geared to hold and protect the back, and then another pair ready to join the attack or press high. It also provides more fluidity in the structure. If one of your defensive mids pushes up, one of the attacking mids can drop, and you maintain balance. And whenever the opposition tends to press bottom players, it creates space for the top ones to get the ball. It basically helps outnumber the opposition's midfields and move the ball better through the lines. However, due to Zinchenko being injury-prone, there will be no other player in the squad who could effectively replicate this role. But with Havertz's arrival, Arteta may find an innovative ways to continue using his box system. As he can play Havertz as a false nine who often drops deeper into the midfield, this will allow Havertz to partner with Odegaard, forming a box structure with the double pivot of Rice and Party. Unlike the inverted full-back system with Zinchenko, this approach keeps the back four more intact. This will drag the markers centrally, leaving space on the flanks for the wingers and fullbacks to exploit. But against weaker oppositions, he plays Partey as an inverted fullback and partners Havertz with Odegaard. And when they advance forward, similar to Zinchenko, Partey cuts inside alongside Rice to form a pivot. So the structure changes from a 4-3-3 to 3-2-4-1, which is quite similar to Pep's Man City. And this we saw in the recent game against Forest. Last season, Arsenal won quite a few games near the end of full time that helped them to keep fighting for the title. The reason they did it is mainly due to Arteta's 2-3-5 strategy in the final third. In this strategic approach, both center defenders remain deep, while the full backs invert centrally into the half space near CDM, forming a three-man defensive line, while the central midfielders overload forward to join the front three, orchestrating a five-man attacking force. These five players spreads the opposing defense wider, creating gaps for penetrating passes, and increases the opportunities to break down a well-organized defense. It also forces the opposition to sit deeper and cover these five players with more markers, which can leave space near the edge of the box for remaining three players to get into and take a shot from distance. And due to this, Arsenal have netted quite a few goals from their long shots and last minutes. Right. This structure also assisted them in frequently winning the ball back within their half by spreading their players across all areas and with three players covering the midfield. On right-hand side, Arsenal have more skillful players who use their dribbling to charge at the defense to get through, while on left they have more direct players, who gain from the space formed by right players who drags the markers to them. So Arsenal usually build up from right, and then play direct cross pass to the left-hand players to exploit. Last season, with the left back tucking inward, Ben White typically served as a defensive full back, and positioned himself deeper creating a back three. With Rice's arrival, White gains more freedom to push forward 
and overlap on the right flank. Rice maintains a deep position between the two central defenders during build-ups. This grants the full backs full liberty to roam, as we saw against Man City. And finally, without possession, they transform from a 2-3-5 attacking structure into a 4-4-2 defensive alignment. Arsenal winger are always ready to track back and help the full back if needed. They also use the high line to squeeze the opposition buildup and try to win the ball higher up the pitch. Now let's take a look at player roles that replicate how they play against strong oppositions. At goal, Ramsdale acts as a sweeper. Ramsdale has been solid for Arsenal especially in possession, as he plays an important role in team's build-up and allowed the team to play high line pretty well, but he faced a weak run of form at the end of the last season. With the signing of David Raya, this could spark competition for the number one spot. David Raya had better goal saving rate of 77% against Ramsdale's 68% last season, and he's more confident in catching the ball and ranked the fourth top keeper in goal prevention in the league. This might help Ramsdale to improve further with the fear of getting replaced. Both the centre-backs of Arsenal often act as a ball-playing defenders. Similar to Pep, Arteta often prefers to play out from back and have a dynamic passing links from start itself. And both of them are comfortable on the ball and can play short or long diagonal passes pretty well. In fact, Saliba had a passing accuracy of 93% in the Premier League, which was the second highest among all defenders. Timber and White can act as wing-backs. Instead of inverting, Timber is better at carrying the ball wide and making overlapping runs. This will provide Arsenal with more width and attacking options on the left. At midfield, Thomas Party acts as a defensive mid. Thomas excels in defensive situations with his strong tackling and physicality. He's able to win back possession and shield the defense. Even if playing as a right back, he will still move centrally to play as a typical number six. Also, he possesses exceptional passing ability as he delivers long balls into open spaces from deep. Declan Rice is more of a box-to-box -box player. Rice's ability to turn a defensive move into an attacking one is remarkable. He is one of the best progressive carriers of the ball in Europe as he recovers the ball back effectively and quickly transfer it into the final third. Also Rice's reading of the game allows him to cover different parts of the pitch, like acting as a third center back or moving wide to cover the left back position. He can be a key factor for Arsenal's success this season. Odegaard can act as a roaming playmaker. With both Rice and Party, he will get more freedom to attack. Also he's one of the most creative players in the league. His exceptional passing range and vision make him a an ideal playmaker for Arsenal. He had a pass completion rate of 83%, which was the third highest in the Premier League. With the opposition overloading defense on one side, Arsenal wingers faced numerical disadvantage and experienced difficulties breaking through last season. But now with Havertz and Odegaard, they can provide support to the wingers by drifting wide and drawing the attention of the opposition. This approach should assist Arsenal in exploiting the wide areas. At right wing, Saka acts as an inverted winger. Saka was a key player in Arsenal's title challenge last season. He uses his pace and excellent dribbling skills to cut inside and shoot or create chances for his teammates with his crosses. He possesses a good technical ability that allows him to strike the ball cleanly. Also Saka's movement creates space for White to overlap and get into goal-scoring positions. On left, Martinelli is an inside forward who is very effective in this role. Martinelli is renowned for his speed and ability to take on defenders and his direct approach often leads to goal-scoring opportunities. Havertz can be used as a false nine. Given Hazel's susceptibility to injuries, Arteta might opt for a striker-less strategy, similar to Pep's tactics before Holland. Alternatively, he could also pair him with Jesus as a second striker. He is more of a technical player and known for his work off the ball, including pressing and leading the line. Despite not being a natural striker, his movement and timing allows him to be in the right place for cutbacks and scoring opportunities. Set the team mentality to control. This reflects Arteta's desire to dominate possession and control the flow of the game. Next, set the width to narrow and the tempo to fast. This combination allows for quick intricate passing and movement just like Arsenal. Arteta loves a high pressing system and uses a high line to squeeze the opposition buildup. So set the defensive line to high. In the final third, choose look for overlap and run at defense. This encourages dynamic attacking play and utilizes the full backs effectively. Finally set the passing style to short. 
Now let's test Arteta's tactic against Barcelona and see how it performs practically. As you can see, as Arsenal entered the final third, their shape changed into a 2-3-5 structure, resembling Arteta's style of play. So the first goal was engineered by Timber and number 11 Martinelli, as they stretched the opposition wide, and then Timber faked a cross, which drew the attention of the center backs to mark the striker. This created space for Odegaard to move in and score this fabulous goal. With Timber as a wing back, it created a 2v1 scenario for the opposition right back. This gave enough space for Martinelli to get into and score. Playing as a false nine, Kai Havertz dropped deep to partner with Odegaard and moved wide dragging half of the opposition's back line with him. This created space centrally, and then Rice as a box-to-box -box mid took advantage of it. Arsenal almost had a chance to touch that Premier League trophy, but Pep Guardiola left no room for error for Arteta and switched from his typical 4-3-3 to his newly innovated 3-4-2-1 system that made an insane comeback by demolishing every opposition in their path to winning the treble. So what is this new tactic that took Pep to next level? Let's find out by clicking this video.